Hey everyone, welcome to ONTAP. I'm Chris, your host, and today we will be switching gears from talking about the Celtic lands of the British Isles to talking about the Anglo lands of the British Isles by profiling the English brewery Fuller's. While the company Fuller's has been around since the 19th century, the site on which the brewery is currently based has been a site at which people have been brewing beer since at least the 1600s. And this is located in Chiswick, yes it's pronounced Chiswick, not Chiswick, in West London. So the brewery that's currently there, which is called the Griffin Brewery, has been around since 1816, a year after peace was restored to the continent following Britain's victory over Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo. And I'm going to be honest, I bet in 1816 people were still probably getting drunk after that win. But how did the Fuller's Brewery start? Well, there are some moving pieces, but if you've ever tried to start a business with some people and let's just say you don't all get along very well, that's kind of what happened here. And then maybe I'll add on top of that the fact that one or more of you are trying to start a brewery but you don't actually know anything about brewing beer, that's also what happened here. So long and short of it, it seemed that the sort of owners of the Griffin Brewery were running into some trouble in sort of the 1830s and they brought Mr. Fuller on board. And Mr. Fuller was, well, he was rich. That was pretty much it. He just, he was an investor. But when he showed up, it seemed like people didn't really get along very well, and pretty quickly the original brewers actually picked up and left. One of them even moved to France, so you know things were bad. Then you had Mr. Fuller stuck with this brewery, but he didn't actually know anything about brewing beer, or beer in general, other than probably how to drink it, presumably. But it turns out he had, it seems, a get-out-of-jail-free card, or rather a get-out-of-a-failing-business-free card in the form of his son who is able to convince a couple of other brewers to actually come on board and start a company with the dad. And then in 1845, they got everything off the ground and running. And that's why 1845 is marked as the official founding date of the Fuller's Company. The company continued to have very solid growth through the 18 and 1900s, then fast forward to the 21st century, and this now very successful company was actually purchased by the Japanese beer company Asahi. This made some pretty big waves in Britain because for a very long time, Fuller's had been seen as this sort of British family-owned company that was sort of, wasn't owned by a big sort of international conglomerate, but no longer. Fuller's has also established a reputation for itself as producing really good sort of English bitters. And if you don't live in the UK or Ireland, or maybe just in general, you're not quite familiar with what bitters are, in a sentence, bitter is a very uniquely British and especially English style of pale ale that can range from gold to sort of dark kind of amber, and it has a bitter flavor. Imagine that. You can find Fuller's in 80 countries around the world, which honestly is quite a lot given the fact that the brewery is reasonably good sized for sort of the UK, but it's definitely not a huge global beer conglomerate. Fuller's also, like many other breweries in the UK, owns a number of establishments. The company currently manages 380 restaurants, pubs, and hotels across England. Fuller's is also a company that is quite highly decorated. So at the World Beer Cup or the World Beer Awards, a number of Fuller's beers have done very well. One of their brewers, the ESB, won gold in the category of European Pale Ale. And another one of their beers, the London Pride, has been marked down by many people as one of the best English bitters out there. And then finally, while the company is called Fuller's, the brewery is actually still called the Griffin Brewery. And if we look at the logo for a second, we see that it is a griffin with its front talon on a barrel of beer, which uh, let's just say I'm a big fan of medieval heraldry whenever it can be incorporated well into designs. And uh, yeah, griffin's pretty damn cool. So point to Fuller's in my book. So while Fuller's is not a company that has one single beer that defines the whole brewery, there are definitely some more well-known beers you'll find associated with this label. So today we will be trying London Pride the classic Fuller's beer, and one of their most highly awarded. This is a English Best Bitters, so it's gonna have an ABV of around 4.1 to 4.7, depending on if that's cask or bottle. And the beer is very balanced. It's got a nice mix of both malt and hops. London Pride is also called this, not just because it's from London, but it's actually named after a local flower, the Saxifraga rubidium. And the Saxifraga rubidium actually became quite famous during World War II when it was often the first plant to start growing on the sites of destroyed buildings that had been blown up by German bombs during the Blitz. And so this flower became sort of a symbol of life and hope for Londoners. And if you can't guess by now, the flower was called London Pride. So good name for flower, good name for a beer. Actually, a total aside, but my Nana, when she was a little girl, had her house destroyed by German bombs, as both she and my granddad lived through the Blitz in England. 
ESP. This is another one of Fuller's most highly regarded beers, and it stands for Extra Special Bitter. Well, what makes it extra special? The fact that it's got an ABV of around 5.5 to 5.9%, depending on if that's cask or bottle, which is well above not only just English regular bitters, but even English best bitters. That makes it what's called a premium or extra special bitters. This beer is going to be a bit darker in color. It's more of a mahogany, and it's going to have more sort of malty, toffee, biscuity flavors. Definitely way less in the way of hops. London Porter. Well, this is a porter, so it's going to be very sort of dark, heavy, and creamy, and there are going to be those sort of earthy notes to the beer, especially some notes of coffee and chocolate, which is interesting because I actually associate coffee more sort of with stouts rather than porters, but we shall see. And yes, this is another highly awarded Fuller's beer. So let's get to tasting and see how some of these award-winning beers stack up against each other. So first up, we have the London Pride. This is an English Best Bitters, 4.7 ABV in the bottle. Not too much head on that, but it is a very nice sort of orangey uh, amber color. Yeah, and it smells a little dry. Yeah, that's very, that's very nice. It's very, it's sort of a slightly bitter, but sort of smooth type of beer. It's not super complicated in that you're having to always think about like a really strong flavor, but it's more interesting than just kind of a basic lager. It's smooth, yet slightly bitter. And that's, and that's what I would think of as sort of a good English best bitters. And it's got a good body. It doesn't, it doesn't feel thin. So it's not a, I don't describe this as a heavy beer. And it's, I wouldn't describe it as clean or crisp either, like some German beers. I think it's, it's the dryness. It's sort of a little bit of the hops that kind of sits in your palate after you have a drink. It doesn't feel crisp. It feels like it's kind of got some heaviness to it, but at the same time, it also feels very light. It's more like kind of a lager in terms of the feeling of when you're drinking it, in the sense that it doesn't feel like a stout or a porter, but it's also, and this I guess would be like a pale ale, I mean, which it, which it is, if it's, a, if it's a best bitter, it's in the realm of a pale ale. It's like halfway between a dry sort of IPA bitter and more of sort of a malty, kind of a malty flavor. Yeah, it's quite an enjoyable beer, more complicated than just a lager, but it's still kind of very easy to drink and it's very sort of calming and there's sort of a nice sort of bitterness woven in there where you don't have to think about it too hard. So it is definitely a nice balance of sort of malt and hops together. So all in all, quite enjoyable. Um, we're off to a good start. So next we have the ESP, the premium or extra special bitters. And this is 5.9%, which is quite high for a bitters. And it is, it says here, uh, our most awarded ale. So let's give it a try. Well, I wouldn't describe this as mahogany. I would say this is very similar in color actually to the London Pride. I am getting more sort of biscuity malt on, on the nose of this, so yes. Yes, that is, that is a very nice English bitters. It feels deeper. It feels like this beer has a deeper well of flavor than this beer. If you took this beer, if you took the London Pride and you just made it more premium, you kept all those flavors, but you just amplified them a bit, you'd get something like this. I mean, 5.9% in the scheme of all the beers out there, that's not gonna be super, super crazy, but it, it does add sort of just a little bit extra weight to the beer. And the flavors are, are very nice on this. They're very nicely melded together. This is not quite as bitter. This is more, it's a little sweet, it's got some toffee. It's definitely got some nice sort of biscuity malt flavor in there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite full body. There might even be a little bit of, I don't, I don't know if I want to say a fruit, fruit flavor of some sort, but something like that. This is, this is very, this is a very nice beer. And I can, I can see so far, I mean, why this is, why this is a very highly rated beer. I mean, this, again, this one is good too, but I can see why this is very highly rated. A little bit more of the bitterness. So it's, it's definitely still there. I wouldn't say this has no bitterness to it at all, but it's definitely less bitter than this one. But then there's some other flavor that's hanging around in there. I don't want to describe it as fruit, but there's something in this, but it's so, so faint, I can't really put my finger on what it is. This is, I mean, both of these are smooth, but this is, this is very smooth. 
So really well done. Good job, Fullers. So last up, we have London Porter. And this is going to have those kind of dark, creamy, earthy notes to it. Curious to see how the sort of chocolate combination works. Now, interesting, this is not a uh, midnight black. This is very, very dark. And if you kind of put it on the table there, you can see there's just a, a little bit of a little bit of light coming through the bottom. I would say that really this is more of a what I think of as a mahogany color, whereas these are both more sort of amber. Mm, yeah, so I'm getting some, you know, like a, like a almost like black currant or something. So, so that's interesting. You know, that's a very interesting combination of flavors. Here's, there are things I like about this. There are things I would expect from a porter that this doesn't have. This is not something that I would describe as creamy. And I wouldn't really describe it as particularly smooth. In, in some ways, I would say these two are, are actually smoother in terms of the flavors that kind of one would one would think about. There, there's still a flavor that's like popping in my mouth actually after drinking this, and and it's not coffee and it's not chocolate. I'm actually getting very little coffee and chocolate in this at all. I'm getting more a mixture of different kinds of malt and hops. It's not simply there's malt flavor and then there's hops flavor, but there are different types of malt and hops flavor that create different things. And that's aside from other sorts of items, like literally putting, you know, sort of the flavors of like coffee and chocolate into a beer where you're gonna get those flavors, but just using the malt and the hops to create different sorts of um, combinations. What I, what I wonder if what's going on here is the strain of hops and malt that are used in this are very, notable. There are hops and malt that create very sort of strong flavors where there's almost a dark yet bright sort of almost tingling sensation. It's maybe like if you took the London Pride and you turned the London Pride into something like a porter, but you maybe still kept a tiny, tiny little remnant of that characteristic of like an English pale ale, but you just really, really darkened it. That's sort of maybe what this is like. This was not what I was expecting at all. I was expecting this to be sort of, you know, a midnight black porter, gonna taste like kind of silky, smooth chocolate. And that's not exact, that's not at all what I got. So very interesting type of beer. And if you want to try something that's not your usual porter, highly recommend this. When we get back after these messages, I'm kidding, there are no messages, we'll have a final ranking on these three beers, all of which are, are quite nice to excellent in their own way. So, I think I've come to my final assessment, which is tied for second place with the London Porter maybe just, just slightly ahead. We've got London Pride and London Porter sort of together. And then for sure in first place, is the ESB. All of these are very nice English beers. The London Pride is absolutely what I would think of when I would think of just a classic English best bitters. It's kind of malty. It's ho not hoppy like IPA hoppy, and it's kind of bitter yet also um, smooth. Right? It's a very good English pale ale. That's what the London Pride is, and you will quite enjoy this. London Porter. There's more going on with this. And as I said, it's so far for porters that I have drank in my life, this is quite a unique one. The thing about this is so interesting is it's the style of malt and the style of hops, multiple of which are used together that create this very, very interesting drinking experience where it's like you're taking the flavors of an English pale ale, but you're making them darker like a porter. You're also keeping a bit of bitterness and a little bit of sort of a bright, strong, almost tingling sensation mixed in with a bit of a sort of roasted malty flavor, but there's no sense of coffee or chocolate that I'm getting from this really at all. So very, very interesting if you wanna try sort of an English porter that's not just, you know, basically just the same thing as a stout, but it's just slightly different. Like this is like its own thing, it's its own, really type of beer. And then finally, in first place, we've got the ESB. Um, this is of the three, absolutely my favorite. I can see why this is such a highly re regarded beer. The way I describe it is, if you took the London Pride, you lowered the bitterness a bit, 
and then you just upped the depth of flavor in all senses of the word with toffee, so a bit of the sweetness there, just a full, rich, biscuity, malty kind of base. I th there's got to be some kind of fruit just barely floating around in there. And also on the nose of this, I remember thinking that there was almost something of like a black currant or like a raisin. But all in all, it's a really enjoyable beer. Other thing that I want to talk about with these is all of these beers should not be drunk cold. And one thing that I did with these, and I'm very happy I did, was I took them out of the fridge and then had them sit for about 15 minutes, uh, maybe not quite 20 minutes before I opened them. And that made a huge difference. If I was drinking these ice cold, I would not at all be able to appreciate the flavors that they all have. A lot of beers, especially a lot of English beers, you do not want to drink them ice cold. You want to drink them cool, 48, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, sort of 10 degrees centigrade, something like that. And of course, none of these are hot weather beers. These are all excellent, excellent beers to have in, well, English weather. If it's sort of cool, cloudy, little rainy, you know, a little dark, um, these are all excellent beers to have out in the garden or to sort of, you know, have uh, have a pump. They're all very good quality. So well done to Fuller's, all of these, you know, London Pride, London Porter, and ESB. All of them are good beers. ESB, really excellent. Um, highly recommended if you see it, yeah, um, give, it a, give it a try. I mean, give, give any of these a try, especially if you maybe haven't had uh, English beers as much. Uh, I really highly recommend you, you try them out. They're very nice and they're gonna give you different um, taste profiles from what you might normally expect if you usually are just drinking you know, sort of lagers, IPAs, and, you know, stouts and and um, and stuff like that. So anyway, let me know if you thought my assessment of these was uh, good, if you disagree with them, if you agree with them, if I'm totally off the mark, and um, I'll see you next time.